chocolate coins, a delicious and patriotic treat served every 4th of July. But this is America. We do everything bigger here. Here in America, everything is bigger. Our cars, our food, our national debt, no country even comes close. We'll be taking that same ingenuity to chocolate coins. And if there's any cynical NPR types watching this, Hundreds of Aboriginal women go missing yearly in Canada. There's far-right fascist groups on the rise in Europe. There's a rape epidemic in Sweden, and Japan's suicide rate is sky high. There is no such thing as the perfect country. Present company excluded, that is. Now let's get started. Now in order to make the giant chocolate coins, we need a mold. But I'm gonna find one for giant chocolate coins, so we'll make one. They're gonna be using the substance rich husbands use on their wives to delay their divorce by two years. Silicone, specifically molding silicone. Specifically, specifically, Smooth Sil 940 by Smoothon. Abstract. This is not a sponsored video by Smoothon or anyone else. I'm just a fan of their products. In fact, I paid for this with my own money. Will you need anything this big? Well, if you want to make a ton of them like I did, then yeah, you will need something this big. This will set you back $140. Now they do make a smaller trial size version of this. And that version is okay if you're okay with making a small amount. But if you want to do what I did and make tons, then you're going to have to fork out the money for the gallon size. Anyway, to begin, you're going to need big replica coins. There's a link in the description on where you can buy these. First, grab yourself a disposable takeaway tray with a paper lid. And make sure you crimp it nice and good so no silicone leaks out. Then flip the whole thing upside down and using an X-Acto knife, cut off the bottom of the tray. Then with a hot glue gun, put a little dab of hot glue on the bottom and stick your giant souvenir coin down in the center. Then pre-mix the giant tub of silicone to make sure no oil is separated from the actual silicone. Then grab a scale, in the description, and measure out 300 grams of silicone. Pouring the silicone into the jar is going to be a bit overkill, but thankfully the silicone is so thick and viscous, just dip the mixing stick into the silicone and let it drip into the container. Do this until you got about 300 grams. Then when it comes time to add the catalyst, divide the weight of the silicone by 10, and that's how many grams of catalyst you add, or about 30 grams of catalyst. Mix until you get a nice uniform color without any streaks. Then take the container and give as many hard taps against the counter as you can so air bubbles escape. Pour the silicone out in a long thin strand to further minimize any air bubbles. Keep pouring until the container is a third of the way full. Then let it cure for 24 hours. After 24 hours, remove the coin from the silicone, and if all has gone well, you're left with a very clean and detailed mold. If you're gonna be making a lot of chocolate coins, I highly suggest that you buy some casting resin, specifically Smooth Cast 300. Unlike the silicone, you don't need anything this big. You can get by with the small trial size version. Now for the two-part resin, just mix equal parts by volume of part A and part B. Oh, and I recommend doing this outside because the resin can give off kind of a funky and irritating smell. So mix the two parts very thoroughly and pour into our molds. And once they magically harden, allow them to further cure for an additional 5 to 10 minutes. Oh, just a warning, the resin can get incredibly hot as it's curing. Now, Yeah, don't do that. And after 5 to 10 minutes, if everything's done well, you're left with a nice, beautiful, clean casting. Now grab some giant disposable takeaway tins, slap a lid on them, grip them good, cut out the bottom, just like before. Now, it's depending on what size tray you use, but for this one, you'll need about six coins. Then mix together 2,500 grams of silicone and 250 grams of catalyst, per container that is. Mix it together like before, pour in a long thin strand like before, and let it cure for 24 hours like before. And once everything's all said and done, it should come out looking like this. Finally, the chocolate. Add 12 ounces of the melting chocolate of your choice into a microwave safe bowl. We're gonna be melting the chocolate in the microwave. First things first, put the silicone mold on an aluminum baking sheet. You'll find out why later. Set the microwave for three minutes and nuke the chocolate for 30 seconds. And give the chocolate a nice stir with a silicone spatula. Then nuke it for another 15 seconds in the microwave and give it another stir. Keep doing this until the chocolate's nice and fully melted. Now using a candy funnel, pour in about 
two tablespoons of chocolate per mold. Then with the help of the aluminum baking sheet, shake the pan until the chocolate evens out. And while you'll let the coin school, enjoy that leftover melted chocolate, you gluttonous bastard. Even if there are no fireworks at your celebration, if you serve these instead, people will still go, ooh, and will still probably do damage to themselves. This has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun, and meaning it this time. Hello fellow patriots, if you like this video, smash the like button, maybe even become a subscriber. If you're watching this video on the exact day it's uploaded, then that means I'm probably wandering the halls at VidCon. Come up, say hi to me, take a selfie with me, that's fine. And just a heads up, no, I will not read your fanfic. I don't care who you ship me with, it's a big fat no.